Hey everybody, um, this is how I made my boost reference power valve on this uh, Proform bodied 750 double pumper I've got for my turbocharged truck that you see in some of my other videos. Haven't worked on this for a long time and I actually went from fuel injection to a carburetor just to try out some of these ideas and see how they work and this is one I haven't tried out yet so I'll show you what I've done here. This is a power valve that I cut the top of it off. Usually they, <clears throat> you know, look like that. But I cut this round part off, took the spring off, and I'll show you here. You can see that opens and lets fuel through. But the way I'm going to set it up, it's going to have a spring on this side that keeps it closed. On this side, I'm going to have boost that will open it against this spring and this is the spring that I've made for it. I just found it out in one of my spring collections. It might be kind of stiff but this this is the power valve that I'm going to go with and I'll show you the modification I did with the metering block. That spring in the power valve push against this plate right here. See the power valve on the back side screws in here. I'll actually do that now. Make sure the spring's on there. Make sure your gasket's on there as well. Now you're not going to be able to see this in the video, but that spring is pushing against the plate here. And the boost pressure, the boost reference power valve, will push against that diaphragm and open that little valve and let fuel, throw, fuel flow through the power valve channel restrictors, which I've already drilled out. And I think they're like 84 thousandths right now. So that's <clears throat> that part of it. The only other thing that you need to do is modify your main body. And how you do that is you have to plug off the lower channel that goes to the manifold because that's where you get your vacuum from. It's, and it's right there. I've already plugged it. I used a piece of welding rod and a little epoxy. Put it up through there, epoxied it in. And you can see on this there's the welding rod coming up. I kind of bend it over to the side so it doesn't fall out and go into the motor. And then the tricky part is to drill an outside source. And this is what I did here. I took a drill and I drilled through the main body into this passage where the power valve is. And I'm going to connect this directly to my turbo. And that will give this a full boost pressure and it will see no vacuum whatsoever and the boost coming from the turbo will open up the power valve and make everything work in theory like it's supposed to so that's what I've done and that's <clears throat> kinda how you gotta I've seen other guys do it this is by no means my idea I'm just taking things I've seen off the internet and on uh, the turbo forums and implementing it into what I'm doing. I also, if you've noticed, I've epoxied the main wells on the tops of the metering blocks because I was getting a little bit of seepage from both of those. And that's the secondary side. The jet extensions and all. And I also have the uh, vent tube uh, the vent tube deals that go through your carb hat. I can't remember the name that they're giving them now, but I'll, sh I'll show you that in a second. Rubber hose goes up like this, goes into the top of the main hat, and it kind of pressurizes the the float bowls, and that that re works really well. I've tried that in the past, and it's I've actually dropped a lot of jet sizes. I'm running 69s in the front and 65s in the rear, and that's along with my power valve channel restrictors. <clears throat> and I'll show you that now. Okay, here's the carb hat I'm using, and you can see the uh, vent tube extensions is what they're called, I believe. And they're just, I just took a couple of pieces of fuel line, flared the ends, one for the primary bowl, one for the secondary bowl, 
and uh, they go to these hoses. You put these hoses onto your vent tube, tubes on the float bowls, and that's what kind of hyper pressurizes your vent or your uh, float bowls, and it, it works really well. And uh, if you haven't tried it, you probably definitely worth giving this a try, especially on a turbo car because turbos they're hard to hard to make work on the street in a carburetor, and I think a lot of these ideas are are uh, going to help out quite a bit. So all of this is untested, so we're going to find out, and I'll hopefully have another video with positive results. Well, it's been a couple of weeks since I made the first part of this video, and I've had some time testing and trying a couple of things out. <clears throat> a couple of things I want to go over, though. Uh, let's go to the carburetor, and I'll show you what I've ended up with. The plate that I built for the spring re retainer for the power valve, I had to whittle that down quite a bit because it was hitting the, the float, and the float actually stuck uh, so the needle was off the seat and it flooded the, mo the entire motor with like two gallons of gas right down the intake manifold because it went up through my vent tube extensions and down into the engine had to change the oil and all that it was kind of a mess but anyway I recommend making that as small as possible and uh, just to prevent any kind of interference with the the float um, <clears throat> uh, I've also had to rejet I drilled my power valve restrictors out a little bit more, like 94,000, so I'm up to, well, I went down a little little bit on my primary 68s, and I'm, I just went up to 72s in my secondaries because I was getting a little bit lean on open throttle, but, and I got to play with some pump squirters, and anyway, the other thing I wanted to mention was I, earlier in the video, I mentioned that I ran my boost reference power valve straight to my turbo, and there's a reason for that. <clears throat> Because I have an intercooler, and this is the, the line that goes right to the turbo. It goes right underneath here. This is pre-intercooler boost that goes to the power valve. Because if you know anything about intercoolers, there's a little bit of a pressure drop across the intercooler. And you'll actually see less boost over here than you do on the hot side of the intercooler <clears throat> because of the pressure drop. So this boost that goes to the power valve is probably one or two pounds more than what's going into the float bowls and in, in, into the engine. So that one or two pounds is working in your favor in, on this power valve channel restrictor deal. And that's one thing I wanted to mention for anybody that's got an intercooler. That's kind of a, a nice idea. And I've heard of guys using fuel pressure to open their um, power valve, their boost reference power valves. It would be boost reference then. It would be fuel reference. But... Uh, the other thing I wanted to touch on was the spring that I made for the power valve itself. I've had to modify that spring two or three times. And it's that's the key to this whole thing is that spring. And it started out looking like that. And I whittled it down a little bit <clears throat> to where it's barely touching that plate. I mean, you don't want very much pressure on this side where the boost is, is hitting the that diaphragm. You want it to have not much pressure. And I, I have a theory that the pressure inside the fuel bowl as the engine's running up with just normal vacuum, the pressure of the fuel and possibly with the vent tube extension, there's a little bit of, of uh, atmosphere, you know, boost pressure, maybe not boost pressure, but a little bit pressure in the on this side of the power valve. And that helps keep that plunger closed besides the spring. Because I had to whittle that spring down quite a bit to where it was barely touching this plate. I guess I better get it in the shot. I was bar <clears throat> barely touching this plate. So as I go into, you know, zero vacuum and start, because you want this to open in a little bit of vacuum so it doesn't sputter and pop and shit. So I had to modify that, and that's the key of this whole thing is that spring. If you get the right spring, this is going to work great, and so far this has worked exceptionally well. I'm still tuning a little bit here and there, you know, getting the, air fuel right in different places but overall the part throttle cruising and you know getting into boost with just the primaries that's usually always the problem with turbos is the, the, the part throttle cruising and this has really helped that out if not eliminated it so ho hopefully you can understand with all my mumbling and jumbling and my shitty video work but anyway I hope this helps somebody out uh, I never could find a video on this on YouTube but maybe I just didn't look hard enough but 
Uh, I'll try to keep everybody posted and see what happens with this.